hair it was black and curly her cheeks were a chestnut red on her breast she wore white linen there i long to lay my head Virginia. So how do we play this song, guys? Uh, first thing, um, we got to get our instrument in tune. I decided to use, uh, just for fun, this, this very rare English banjo. It's from the 1860s or the 1870s. Um, very unusual, rare instrument. And just for fun, I thought I'd use it on this lesson. Um, so I know of three different tunings that I, that I will use to play East Virginia. Uh, the most complex and most unusual is what I like to call the, the East Virginia tuning, which is FFGCD. So that's basically your fifth string and your bass string are tuned alike, both at F. I call that East Virginia tuning because I don't, I don't play anything else in that tuning. That basically frees up your left hand. You use fewer fingers to play the song. Uh, the other tuning that I like to use is uh, what people call F tuning, FDGCD. And then the tuning that I'm in right now is just, I'm in straight G modal tuning, G, D, G, C, D. I like to call that pretty poly tuning. I'm one full step lower than that as usual. So I'm actually in F, F, C, F, A, C right now. But it's just straight G modal tuning relative, tuned low. So how do you actually play the song? In this tuning, you're going to need to know uh, a couple of simple shapes for your left hand and these are just good to know if you're not already using these this will be a good opportunity for you to learn learn these shapes when you in this tuning with these two shapes you can play a lot of different songs just in these two chords here um, so the way you start out is um, take your ring finger place it on the first string at the third fret then take your pointer finger and put it on the third string at the second fret then take your middle finger Put it on the bass string at the third fret. That gives you this, this chord. And then the other chord is you just move your, your pointer and your middle finger down one. So you should be able to follow that. That's simple. Two little chords, and then when you go open, you get another chord. That's it. So how do you actually play East Virginia? It starts off on the third string open. going to note at the third fret on the third string. I am from... So open, third at the third, open. And then note it again. Old. Then hammer with your index finger down on the second string at the second fret. I am from Old East Ver... And then you're going to go note the third string at the second fret then play it open again and then make go to the full chord I am from Old East Virginia that's the whole start of it then go back to the back to the third string noted at the third fret North Carolina I did go so that's it um, I am from Old East Virginia North Carolina I did go and then in, in between there I like to hold, if I'm playing overhand, I like to hold my index finger at the second, on the second string at the second fret, and then do those repeating open string pull-offs. I like to call it Knott County Lick, East Kentucky Lick, where you're repeatedly doing the open string pull-off. I am from Old East Virginia, North Carolina, I did go. I met a fine young woman, know her name, I did not know. It's simple.
Another thing I like to do a lot, I've heard and seen other people do this, is they do this little uh, lick either in between verses or to close the piece out. I like to close the song out with this little, almost like a shave and a haircut lick. Uh, Captain, Captain, I am dying. Won't you take these words for me? Take them back to East Virginia. Tell my darling she is free. All it is is. I think this this song is is a, it's a beautiful song. Uh, a lot of us think it's very early. I think it's. I think it probably goes back to the 18th century. I, I think this song. It's very likely that this song was being sung. Um, it, it seems like it's a Scots Irish, an Anglo Scots Irish song. There's no way to know for sure. But if I had to guess, I would say it was a. It was a white song. But it could be a. Um, an African. An African American song. Uh, it's hard to say. But because it has sort of some of the elements in it to me sound very english so i think of it as a as a as an anglo scots irish song i've tweaked the verses a little bit usually you talk about how um he mentions that he he met a fair young lady a fair young maiden and her cheeks were rosy red well i like to sing about it as if she's more of a dark-skinned gal just as as an ode to uh recognizing you know the the exchange between blacks and whites and that i am convinced occurred on the early frontier. So in my song, when I sing East Virginia, uh, the young lady that um, our protagonist is in love with, she's got chestnut skin and, and, uh, and black curly hair and dark brown eyes. I think that's kind of neat. I don't see any harm in doing that. But you sing it any way you want to sing it. But it's a very early song and it's very simple. It's very repetitive. The other thing is, is um, like I said, I think it was being sung by people probably, um, I think it was probably being sung by whites, be, maybe even be in the days before any white people were playing banjos, maybe very early on in, in the late 1600s, early 1700s perhaps. Um, George Gibson, who I learned the song from, he's convinced that it's an early banjo song. He says, you know, he, he heard people sing it a lot when he was younger, and any time it was accompanied um, musically, it was always played on the banjo. You never heard anybody play it or sing it on, on the fiddle. Um, and a lot less often on the guitar. Usually, historically, when you find examples of people playing this song accompanied on guitar, they're calling it Greenback Dollar. And they're singing the Greenback Dollar verses. I don't want your Greenback Dollar, I don't want your Silver Chain, etc. Greenback Dollar and East Virginia are the same song. You'll also hear it, um, see it documented as uh, Old Kentucky, born and raised in Old Kentucky. That's how Banjo Bill Cornett sung it. But I don't feel like I need to go into too much more detail here. I'm going to show the close-up, so look out for that. But once you get this chord shape down in this tuning, you've got half the song figured out. And then you just need to know it starts off on the third string. Starts and ends on the third string, and you come up with your own way in between there. Beautiful old early song. Um, one more story I want to tell you about um, when George first learned this song. He, he had a neighbor whose mother was a banjo player. And I think his neighbor was a banjo player too, a younger man, maybe George's age. I don't remember exactly. but um, So George was, was uh, talking to the banjo playing mother at one point. This would have been back in the 1950s or the 1960s when George was first learning to play the banjo himself. And... He, somehow the song East Virginia came up and his neighbor's mother, who was a banjo picker, she told George, she said, the only song I could never figure out on the banjo was East Virginia. And so George went home later and got his banjo and he figured out how to play East Virginia on that banjo so he could go back and show her and, and play it for her and he did. He went back and played it for her, you know, after that. So that's kind of a neat, interesting story. We need to remember that... Um, you know, it's interesting, in some areas, historically, females playing the banjo was almost taboo. Um, in some places, it was unheard of. I know around North Georgia and East Tennessee, you hear a lot of people in the old um, recordings and old interviews say that there weren't a lot of women banjo players, or if they were, it was sort of a hidden thing. But uh, apparently, around East Kentucky, 
women playing the banjo was not taboo at all. There was lots of female banjo players. Um, look at Lily Mae Ledford, Cousin Emmy, et cetera, et cetera. There was a lot of them. So that's kind of fascinating, you know, the regional variation. It, it's a reminder that we can't paint with a very broad brush when we're talking about banjo culture, banjo history. Things were very different from one little pocket, one community to the other. So anyhow, I'm going to close this out, guys. That's about all the time I want to take with it. Hope you thought this banjo was neat. I love this, this old 1860s English banjo, 1870s maybe. And look out for the close-ups. That's what's coming next. Thanks for looking.